He was a man, just like you. But he was more than that. He claimed to be the unique, only begotten, incarnate Son of God. In fact, he claimed pre-existence. The scripture says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Before time began, he existed. He said, before Abraham was, I am. I am in eternal existence. No wonder they got angry. No wonder they threw stones at him. No wonder they tried to kill him. And no wonder they eventually did crucify him. He stood and said, I am God. One day he asked his disciples, who do men say that I am? And Peter answered and said, well, some of them say you're John the Baptist come back, or you're Jeremiah, or you're Elijah. He said, I'm really not interested in what the people say. I'm interested, Peter, in what you say. What do you say? Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, Peter, you've done well. You've passed your examination. But Peter, those are not your thoughts. Those thoughts came from God. It has been revealed to you by God. Jesus Christ claimed to be the son of the living God. And you know, at his incarnation, or his birth, that was not his birth, or that wasn't the beginning, that wasn't the origin of Jesus. That was the beginning, that was the beginning of his incarnation. Because he has always existed. From everlasting to everlasting, he is God, the Bible says. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. In other words, the Logos, the Word of God, the eternal God became flesh in the person of Jesus Christ and lived like a man among us. That's what the Bible teaches. And when you come to Jesus Christ, you have to accept that. He wasn't just another revolutionary. He wasn't just another hippie. He was not just another great man. He was God in the flesh. And oh, the ethics that he taught. Never a man spake like that man. When you get hit on one side, he says, turn the other cheek. He never said what to do after that. But he did say, forgive 70 times 7, count that up. How about the little irritations from your wife or your husband? Seventy times seven you forgive. My wife once said that the secret of a happy marriage is two good forgivers.